In this video, I will show how a microbit can be used as an ultrasonic transmitter and receiver. Ultrasound has a frequency of more than 20,000 Hz and cannot be heard by humans, but dogs, bats and several other animals can hear it. First, we will take a look at sound waves. They consist of compressions and rarefactions in the air. The wavelength is the distance between two compressions. When a speaker membrane moves, it will compress the air in one direction. Now compressions are formed and the membrane will make rarefactions when it turns the other way. In this way, sound waves are created and they move away from the speaker at a speed of approximately 340 meters per second. The principle can also be shown by a spring. We will produce ultrasound using a so-called transducer. It contains a crystal that makes ultrasound when exposed to square waves with a frequency of 40,000 Hz. Now one might think that we will use the digital output of the microbit to make these signals. But we use the analog output which in fact is digital. It makes square waves but the duty cycle is changed depending on how big a voltage we want. See more in my YouTube video Motors and Microbit. When 40,000 oscillations take one second, we can calculate that each oscillation, each period, takes 25 microseconds. If we write that number as shown here in the program, the microbit will transmit with the right frequency. The highest value you can write to P0 is 1023. And when we write the value 511 to P0, we will get a duty cycle of 50%. We can study this more closely by using an oscilloscope connected to P0 and ground. I have made the program in a way where the 511 becomes 100 less if I press A and 100 larger if I press B. You can see how this changes the duty cycle. Now I have expanded the transmitting program as shown. Now I can start the ultrasound with button A and stop it with button B. Here I have mounted the transmitter in a small holder and connected it to the microbit. The ground cable must be connected to the leg located on the transducer's metal housing. Now we need a receiver. The diagram looks like this. It is marked where P1, P2 and the motor should be connected. A transducer is also mounted here. When the crystal inside the transducer receives an ultrasound, it makes a current that oscillates in step with the sound. We must have this current amplified. On a board, the amplifier looks like this. The leg located on the transducer's metal housing must be soldered at zero volts. Now we will study the mode of operation a little closer by using an oscilloscope. So I have put the transmitter and the receiver closely together. The first transistor receives a small base current from the 470 kilo ohm resistor so that it is just about to conduct. The signal delivered by the transducer is then amplified by the transistor. Here I measure the signal at point 1 and it is approximately 0.3 volts from peak to peak. If I measure at point 2, I need to change the scale of the oscilloscope and we get a voltage of approximately 2 volts from peak to peak. Now there is a transistor states more and we will now measure the signal at point 3. The capacitor between the two stages ensures that no direct current runs from the first stage to the second. However, the ultrasound signal is allowed to pass. At point 3 we need to change the scale again and the voltage has now reached 4 volts from peak to peak. 
Now we have a stage with two diodes. They ensure that the capacitor at point 4 is charged with a DC voltage when ultrasound is received. On the oscilloscope it looks like this. When a signal is received, the voltage is 4 volts, and when I hold the hand in front of the transmitter, the voltage drops to 0 volts. Now we need to connect a microbit to the receiver. The program we will start with looks like this. Here is the microbit connected. When I press button A on the transmitter, the microbit on the receiver, using the LEDs, shows how big the received signal is. Here I send ultrasound towards a wall and move the receiver back and forth to receive ultrasound. You can see that the signal changes as the receiver moves. It is because the ultrasound coming from the transmitter interferes with the sound being reflected from the wall. We will now look more closely at interference. To do this we need a piece of cardboard with two slits. The slits have a mutual distance of approximately 2.5 cm and the transmitter is mounted approximately 8 cm behind. Now I move the receiver on the other side of the slits and again we can see that there is a difference in how powerful the signal is. Here the situation is drawn seen from above. The circles represent compressions. When the circle waves from the transmitter come to the slits, new circle waves are formed with a center in the two slits. When two circles cross each other, it means that two compressions meet, with the result that the signal becomes powerful. We will now draw lines where there is a strong signal. In between, there are areas where compression and rarefaction meet all the time. Here there is no signal. We try the experiment again and we can see that if we are on a point with a small signal, it becomes more powerful when we hold up a screen in front of the slit, then there is no interference. Now I have made an extension to the receiver program. If the sound becomes too weak, a tone will appear. Instead of having the LED showing the receiving power, I have now made a counter that can show how many times the ultrasound is interrupted. The last stage on the board is a transistor that can drive a small motor. When P2 is made high, connected to plus 3 volts, the transistor conducts. This is what it looks like.
Now I have extended the program so that it sends a voltage to P2 when the ultrasound becomes too weak. Now the layout looks like this. You can also do the opposite. In this program, the motor will only run if ultrasound is received. The layout now looks like this.